In this video, we're taking a look at BHP Billiton. Now, of course, BHP Billiton is one of those commodities companies that's been around for the longest period of time. But of course, the company has been under pressure of late, and that, of course, has a lot to do with the price of commodities, more specifically iron ore, which price itself has been under pressure. So I wanted to jump back into the company financials. I wanted to have a look at the financials and see if there's still any value that is yet to be unlocked and potentially whether this might be a good investment to make around about now. So let's jump in and take a look. Before we jump into this video, I just wanna ask you a really big favor. I need you to click on that like button and turn it blue because it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So if you can go ahead and click on the like button now. So of course, before we jump in and have a look at the graphs and have a look at all the exciting financial data, I wanted to just quickly touch on the business because I think this is something that's important to know, especially if you're gonna be looking at investing into BH Billiton in the future. Uh, BHP Billiton is a massive company and uh, it's a massive multinational company. They've got a footprint on pretty much almost every continent in the world. Uh, they've got locations scattered throughout the world and in addition to that, besides being a multinational company, they're actually a multi-resource company. They've got a lot of different divisions to their business. They've got the mineral division in America, they've got the mineral division in Australia, they're also involved in the petroleum industry, they're involved in the tech space, and of course, they have a lot of different commercial projects. They are also have a strong footprint, of course, in China and Japan. And really, this is a strong company, very diversified, and as I said, truly multinational. And so this level of complexity, you've got to ask yourself, what does it mean for the bottom line of the business? How does this translate into the actual monetary side of the business? And I think this is where it's important to look at the financials. This is where it's important to look at exactly what's going on with the company. Now, of course, we can see here that the stock had a terrible run, you know, somewhere between 2001 and 2005. They really had a tough period. And then they managed to pull themselves up. And then again, in uh, the late 2009s, they were hit pretty hard and they managed to bounce back again. So they've had a lot of cyclical cycles which very much go hand in hand with the kind of business they're in. And so the stock has kind of followed those cycles and we can see that over here. However, if we come down and we have a look at the company, there's some very, very interesting things going on with their finances. So the first thing is we can see very, very, very strong market cap. The, the price on the company 10 years ago was 92.76, currently trading below that level at 65.83. And again, the question has to be asked, are we at the bottom or nearing the bottom of another cyclical cycle for them? And potentially, this may be a good investment. Well, looking at the P ratio, they're pretty, pretty low on the P ratio at 14.84. They have a strong profit margin at 18.59 and very, very strong equity. In fact, their equity to market cap is 31%. That means in cash, they are so well capitalized that they can actually purchase back 31% of their market cap right now, right today. And then the thing that really makes a stock so attractive is their dividend, 9.23%. It's an incredible dividend. And their payout ratio, surprisingly less than 40%. So even though they're paying out nearly 10% on the dividend, they're still retaining 60%. And that is phenomenal. Looking at the dividend cost to company, it's uh, well below their free cash flow. So that still leaves them with strong net free cash flow, even after paying that dividend. So on the face of it, looking pretty good. Then we come down to the year on years, and this is where the road starts to get a little bit rocky. And I think this is also where we need to really have a very close look at the numbers. And I'm gonna highlight some of these for you. So of course, one of the things we like to see is the number of shares going down every year. And the reason for this is we wanna see a little bit of buyback. We also wanna see that the company's exercising a bit of confidence in themselves uh, and showing that they are you know, taking some of those shares back into from the marketplace. And we can see this has happened. However, along came the pandemic and it looks like they've kind of halted that plan a little bit. So whilst there hasn't been further share dilution, the number of shares haven't been going back. But for the last three years, investors haven't had their shares diluted. And that's a big thing. When you look at assets though, the assets are slightly down. 
uh, from their three-year mark. So it's been a very much a sideways movement for them. And if you have a look at equity, equity is down as well from uh, 6670 to 52246. Then we come down to total revenue, and this is where things start to get a little bit interesting because their revenue is actually up 43638 to 6817. So there's been definite growth in the revenue, and that definitely hasn't come just from issuing shares. Now, if we come down and have a look how this translates, specifically in the operating income, you'll see the operating income's up quite drastically from the three year mark, 15842 to 25302. And then again, if you come down to the free cash flows, for example, you look at operating cash flow, both of these are up quite significantly off the three year mark. So even though this stock is probably gonna be marked down a little bit in terms of my technical evaluation and exactly what I need, it's gotta be said that they are still improving and that is very, very positive. And so I almost feel like my criteria for the stock is a little bit too strict, but that being said, I still have to ask those 12 fundamental questions. The same 12 fundamental questions I place on every stock that I'm looking at. So of course we know that the share price has not doubled. However, the P ratio is well below that 25 mark. Uh, the profit margin is definitely greater than 10%. They have very strong net equity, so assets are greater than liabilities. Dividend cost is less than free cash flow growth. And the number of shares outstanding have not been going down over the last few years, but there's been no share dilution, so that's a good thing. Coming and looking at the total revenue, unfortunately not hitting the mark for three year year on year growth, but it is up on the trading 12 months versus the last three years. Then pretty much the same thing for gross profit, pretty much the same thing for operating income, and pretty much the same thing for net income from continued operations, operating cash flow and free cash flow growth. So on a very strong technical um, basis, we are basically turning them down and giving them negative ratings on those points. But I've got to say, if you compare the three years to the trading 12 months, the stock is improving. And I think that is something that we need to take into consideration. On the fundamentals, 41% positive. On the negative side, 58%. Again, I've got to say, this has a lot to do with the fact that I'm being overly technical in terms of the way I'm marking them. Now, the industry median price target is 75.61. You need to take into consideration they have a return on equity of 24%. They have a return on asset of 17%. And get this, return on invested capital is 11.08%. Not only that, their net income from continued operations is 18.59% of total revenue. So they are definitely, even in a down market, making solid, solid returns. Now, where do I think the price is going? Personally, I think 75 is a fair evaluation. I agree with the analysts on this. I think 75 is probably where this is going to end over the next 12 months. That being said, iron ore is still gonna be uh, one of those commodities under pressure, but fortunately this is a diversified business. But in real terms, this would mean about a 13% gain potentially on the stock, 13.93 to be precise. So there's possibly 14% in it uh, over the next 12, uh, 12 months. And uh, so I think this is a moderate buy. The reason why I say moderate buy is purely based on the fact that I would like to have seen the fundamental score a little bit higher. That being said, if you look at the three year and you look at the trailing 12 months, there is definite momentum. And I think that the only question here is what price should you buy in it? Of course, the price currently sitting at 65.83, it's well discounted at the moment from where it was on the 10 year mark. And of course, it's reflected in this P ratio. So I think that even at this price point, you can't go wrong. I think there's no way to time the market perfectly. There's a possibility it could drop a little bit further. There's a possibility it could go up. So frankly speaking, I think this really comes down to personal preference. For me, I am purchasing into BHP Billiton. I do have a buy order out on it at the moment. I really like the stock and I am buying it for that dividend. And in true contrarian nature, because that's essentially how I've always made money in the stock market, is to go against the flow. When everybody else is betting against the market, I generally look at the markets and especially the businesses in those markets that have solid fundamentals. And for me, these guys have good fundamentals, they've got a long trading history and they've weathered lots of different cycles. So for that reason, you know, I'm prepared to hold the stock for at least 10 years, uh, you know, if not a little bit longer and if that dividend continues. And so frankly speaking, whether the price goes up or goes down in the short term, I really don't care. For me, it is 
about the dividend and it is about making sure that I'm investing in a company where I think my capital is going to be relatively safe. That being said, I of course wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket and so I am doing a uh, dollar cost averaging in and of course I am going to be spreading my money as I invest in and not putting it all in at the same price point. So that's of course something that I'm personally going to be doing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you can show us your appreciation by clicking on the like button, turn that like button blue. The reason why we ask you to do this is not just for our appreciation, but also to help us rank these videos on YouTube and get these videos out. So if you did enjoy it, please click the like button. And of course, one last thing before I go, if you have not already signed up for one of our courses, which is absolutely free of charge, you don't have to join any Patreon, you don't have to take your credit card out, you can just go to our website, the link is down in the description below. I'll also add a video in the link card up above where my business partner, Davi, speaks about exactly why we've done this. Uh, you can go to our website, sign up for the courses completely and utterly free of charge. And of course, if this is your first time here watching this video on our channel, please consider joining our Money Tribe. All you have to do to join our Money Tribe is to subscribe and it's absolutely free. So join the tribe and subscribe. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and join the Global Money Tribe. And because I know you need a little bit of extra motivation every month, I'm gonna be giving away a signed copy of my book, The Money Secret, as well as some really cool channel merch. So if that's not a big enough motivation to subscribe, come and subscribe for the content because every single day we're adding absolutely great content teaching you to invest, save, and manage your money situation.